Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to be upgrading the system memory or RAM on a Dell Inspiron 1520 notebook computer. This is not the 1525, this is actually a 1520, a different model that's in for service. It's much fatter than my 1525 and it, things are built quite a bit different than the 1525. So anyways, um, this computer is running Vista Business and only has one gig of RAM so obviously no Windows Vista has like a gig of RAM or so that's not going to be a very good um, combination in terms of memory and operating system Vista needs at least two gigs of RAM to run at a decent speed and this person just does basic internet browsing and that kind of stuff with this computer so he opted to go ahead and switch up to two gigs of RAM now I could have upgraded it to four gigs but then I would have had to reinstall the operating system with a 64-bit version in order to make use of all the memory because a 32-bit operating system can only address like 3.5 to 3.25 gigs of memory. So we got two gigs of RAM here, two one gigabyte sticks. This is DDR2 SODIMM, which is what this notebook takes. So I'll go ahead and take loose the memory drawer on this computer, which is located right down there where the M is at. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the battery, but first you'll need to shut down your computer if it's in hibernation or if it's in sleep mode. Because in sleep mode, your memory is still active, storing some information. But um, when, it's in when it's in hibernation, your computer is shut down. But when one starts back up, it's going to see different memory and it may not like it too well. So you want to go ahead and shut down Windows before actually going in and upgrading the memory. battery just pulls out on this computer you have to you have to push the lock lever back and this lever here you gotta push it back too and here's the battery still running the factory Dell battery I haven't tested this battery see how well it's doing but um anyways now I'm going to take this door off here And usually these computers have let me see here there's a 512 megabyte stick on this side so this computer is actually built like the latitude D630 which will require taking the keyboard out so let's go ahead and get to doing that Yeah, this is one of those aggravating Dells, I should say. But we can go ahead and take this stick of memory out and set it to the side. Why not? And go ahead and open this one. Now, of course, be careful in handling memory modules because you don't want to end up hitting them with a static shock. So always ground yourself out before touching memory components and that kind of thing which by the way these um, two one gigabyte sticks cost around 30 something bucks on newegg.com so let's go ahead and pop that in there and push down to lock it in place make sure it's lined up properly push it down and it locks there's two latches here Now for the fun part. Okay, now that I replaced the module and bottom of the computer, it's time to go ahead and replace the one under the keyboard, which you gotta have this taken off before you can take the keyboard out, obviously. And I looked up some directions on how to get this off, and they stated that you're supposed to take this off. It's supposed to pull off with a screwdriver. Now it's starting to pop loose. This in here is very tricky to work with. But once you get it started, it should ease up a little bit.
And that's it. Let me set that to the side. There are two screws on the keyboard. One here and one here. But you can't see with the camera. And now it's, you can see it's located right here. Go ahead and take those two out. Yeah, I've never seen a um, cover out so hard to get started like that. Now what I'm doing is I am taking my screwdriver and popping the keyboard loose from the edges of each palm rest. And of course you'll be very careful in doing this because you're really putting the keyboard under stress when you're doing this. And the same goes for your palm rest plastic too. You don't want to break that. And the first memory module is under a little bitty cover which flips back the keyboard plugs into this cover and that plugs into another ribbon cable that goes to the main board and here's that other memory module and pull it out going to unpackage your other memory module which is just the same as the other. So that way they can run a dual channel. And here is a look at that other module. And not only when you upgrade the uh, memory in a LEM system from a small amount to a higher amount, when you use brands like G Skill, Corsair, and brands like that, you're getting better performance memory. So it's always better to go with this rather than the OEM Hynix and Kingston and Samsung stuff. Now Kingston does have memory modules that are called HyperX that are pretty decent. Let's go ahead and push this back in. Bring on the camera so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Memory module is now installed. Go ahead and flip this cover back down. I tell you what, this is one of those weird computers, uh, as I can call it. That everything is a little bit different than your standard laptop. Now I'll go ahead and put this keyboard back in. Slides in. Pop it in on the sides and reattach these two screws. This in here is going a little tight. You just want to be careful not to strip it out. Now I'll go ahead and put the plastic cover back on. Dale refers to this as the hinge cover. It just snaps right in. Now I'll go ahead and reattach the cover for the memory
I'm going to go ahead and put the battery back in. Which it just slides right in. This battery has a battery tester too. It tells you hit the charge level. It's got a full charge. I think this battery here is still in good condition. I'm hoping the owner of this computer didn't shell out a junk load of money on a replacement Dell battery. The ones off of Amazon seem to do just as good past experience on my own. I got a 9 cell anchor battery in my 1525 that's been in there for over a year and it runs very well. Go ahead and grab the power adapter. Now, of course, I could start it up on the battery if I wanted to, but I want to keep the battery fully charged because I'm going to be bringing. Yeah, it's the only one going to be getting this computer tomorrow. I prefer to leave all my laptops done with a full charge and a battery. And luckily I have plenty of Dell adapters because the owner did not provide his. In the moment of truth, I'll go ahead and start it up. Go ahead and load Windows and see how much memory we got. You can also do this in setup, which I'll actually, I'll go into setup and do it. And I'll just make a separate video on this computer because I've had to do a lot of things to this computer. It comes to me in very rough condition. Not physical wise, but software wise. It had a lot of stuff wrong. And of course it needed the extra memory. It's telling me the amount of system memory has changed. Which I'm just running F2. You can press F1 to continue. I'm pressing F2. Just to verify our memory is correct. We have 2 gigs of RAM, 2048 megabytes. After the graphics memory, we have 2038 left. It's running a dual channel. It's DDR2, SD RAM. And of course, as a little note here, it says due to the amount of memory assigned for system use, memory available is less than memory installed. And there's a little disclaimer there for um, your 64-bit operating systems. Can only only those can address memory of like four gigs or more. So, anyways, I'm going to exit out of this. So, anyways, that's how you upgrade the memory in a Dell Inspiron 1520. And there's Windows Vista loading. And the quest for comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.